Hi, it's Amanda with Delighted Creative Co. And I want to show you how to remove the background from your piece of art so that you can have um, artwork with a transparent background that you can use in a variety of ways. So to begin, I took a picture of my watercolor here and I airdropped it to my computer and then opened it in Photoshop. You could also scan and then um, email it to yourself, whatever works for you. So to begin, what I wanna do is remove this layer uh, or change it from background to a layer so that I can start editing. And all I have to do to do that is click here and now it's a layer. Another thing I like to do is go to my adjustments panel, the levels panel actually and and kind of shift around the colors so that they're a little bolder, brighter, and just more true to life. With this eyedropper tool, I can click on a light area of the page and it just brightens everything. And okay, so now we can get to work. So in terms of getting rid of the background, I like the magic wand tool. I'm going to set the tolerance for this piece at six and make sure it's on contiguous. And then also that I have this icon selected, which means that as I'm going through my piece, the magic wand will just keep adding to the selection versus like starting a new one or re uh, removing from it. So I'm going to zoom in a little so we can see what we're doing and then just go through and select all of the white space. Now what I want to make sure I do is avoid any of the color swashes on my watercolor work so that that does not end up getting deleted. Um, and ultimately I'm just going to select the entire white background using my magic wand tool or maybe also a combination of this and the marquee tool for any big spots which I'll show you that right now. Um, like say this here if I hit the shift key, this will just grab big pieces and select them. So that's an option as well. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to stick with the magic wand. Of course, depending on your art, like if you have a flower, for instance, it's really contained and kind of right in the middle of your paper, um, this will not take as long as it's going to take me because of all the swashes everywhere. So, whoops. And if you do that, if you go off the page and deselect everything, just go to your history palette or palette panel and click um, the last thing that you did. So here it is, back to where I was. I'm just gonna go ahead and click around and select all of the background. Okay, so I think I got most of the background, um, but I did want to point something out because you're probably thinking there has got to be a quicker way to do this, and there very well may be, but this is, I think, the best way for this type of project or this type of art. Um, if you have something, like I said, that's a little bit more defined in terms of the shape, you can always um, select an area and then go up to select similar. I'm not gonna do it right now because um, the variation of color is like from very light to dark um, in this piece that it's very likely it's gonna take out some of the color that I don't want it to take. Um, so, oops, I'm, I'm already seeing here that I missed a spot in this area. 
Um, but I think I'm pretty good, so I'm going to hit delete. And it looks like I got most of my white. There's another little section. And I guess I could have gotten that too. Here, so once you hit delete, you can kind of see a little bit better what you might have missed. The white stands out. But once everything has been deleted, all the background, um, then you're all set. And you have now a piece of art with a transparent background that can be used for multiple things. Um, I'll show you next week in the next tutorial how you can use this, for instance, over um, an image, over a color block, or even... Um, just scaling it to different sizes that you can make out of like make a note card or a printable or something like that. So it'll be fun. I hope this helped and have a great day.